welcome to the Government News Brief. This evening, internet connectivity underway for police and medical emergency vehicles, early childhood literacy program makes impact, and hundreds of Guyanese can now communicate easily thanks to hearing aids. <laughs> Minister of State Joseph Harmon this afternoon announced that Education Minister Dr. Rupert Rupnarine will be reassigned to the Ministry of the Presidency with responsibility for public service. This appointment takes effect from June 15. Minister within the Ministry of Education Nicolette Henry will effectively be the Minister of Education. The Housing Revolving Fund might be managed by the Ministry of Finance's Student Loan Agency. Tiffany Rodias tells us more. The Ministry of Finance's Student Loans Agency is to be engaged to manage the Housing Revolving Fund, says Finance Secretary Dr. Hector Butts. We have the student loan agencies which we are working assiduously to put in order. It has some problems right now with this, its, its, um, its systems which is his record. And we're expecting that to be completed by the end of June, putting back the, the, the um, software in action. After that, we'll be looking at the student um, loan agency once it handles itself to perhaps take that on because they're involved in the issue of lending and receiving. Dr. Butts explains that the fund has not been dispersed since its establishment in 2011. There's no other agency at the moment that one would rec recommend to assist with that. So, so it's, it's tied into mm -hmm. the student loan agency coming on its foot and being able to handle the UG requirement and then be able to move towards that. A Bank of Guyana account currently holds $200 million to disperse as loans to teachers to purchase homes. For the Government News Brief, Tiffany Rogers. Thanks, Tiffany. Police officers and emergency medical technicians will soon have internet connectivity to better provide services. Gabriela Patram tells us how. The technology used to connect government buildings and schools will soon be used to provide internet connection to government service vehicles. Residents of number 35 Village, East Burbies, inquired about internet connectivity for police vehicles and ambulances. Presidential advisor on e-government Floyd Levile says that the program can only be fully rolled out if the connectivity gap is closed on the coast. To fix this problem, we actually, the ministry is actually um, in negotiations with the um, Chinese company that actually built this network, Huawei Technologies, to ensure that we have full coverage along the entire coastal region of Guyana, to ensure that these blank spots do not exist. Levi says as soon as arrangements are completed with a Chinese company, the initiative will be fully rolled out. As soon as we finalize the arrangements with Huawei, we'll be putting towers, cell phone towers similar to DigiCell and GTNT, to cover these blank spots. And with that full coverage, I'm certain then that the Guyana Police Force, the Guyana Fire Service, emergency services will be able to use this technology to, to be better able to provide their services. The aim is to have the program rolled out nationally. However, Levi points out that this will take some time. For the Government News Brief, Gabriella Patram. Read, play, love, campaign benefits more nursery and primary school students. Find out how in this report. Chief Education Officer, Ministry of Education, Marcel Hudson, explains that the ministry recognizes the importance of literacy and getting children to read at a very early stage. The Read, Play, Love campaign, Hudson says, will help nursery and primary school children to master their literary skills so that they can perform at their maximum potential. Read, Play, Love, uh, it's uh, done at the national level and uh, we have had uh, good success um, in terms of rolling out of the program in, in Bartica 
um, in the interland areas, in the city. We had some very key persons in the Ministry of Education um, speaking on that program, encouraging persons to really have the parents and the children to be a part of, of, of this whole um, activity. The Chief Education Officer states that parents must become involved if the campaign is to be successful. He notes that some parents are not serious in their children's development and this closes the door for many possibilities in the child's future. When parents are integrally involved in, in the education of their children, particularly in reading, reading stories to the children, um, you know, um, labeling items in the house like a table, chair, over time, you know, it develops the, 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 the reading skills. And so uh, we cannot overemphasize the importance of parents being a part of this process. Hudson adds that parents should also participate in Parent Teachers Association meetings and workshops. The Read Play Love campaign was launched on September 14, 2016. It targets parents and caregivers of children under five, primarily in the most remote administrative regions of the nation. Several hundred persons can now be in touch with their world thanks to the Star Key Hearing Foundation. The Vendry Badu reacts to hearing for the first time in five years. It makes you part of your back in life so you can hear that what was missing all the time of your life. So, so by getting back a new, getting new hearing aid now from this company is very, very auspicious for me. And maybe our other, other patient will have the same thought. Budu is among the more than 500 persons who left the National Exhibition Center at Sophia with restored hearing, thanks to free hearing aids courtesy of the Starkey Hearing Foundation. Among them was 10-year-old Akila Ferrio. I could not hear properly when persons call me. I, I don't hear. I can't hear them and they get angry with me. It is nice now that I can hear properly because I can hear things that I never heard before. Now I could get to listen music more better. It's so nice to, to be a, the, a better person. Akila's father, Askari Faria, explains that she lost her hearing after a common mishap. There was an experiment and it, was, it involved a peep or the peas or what we would call it, right? and she put one of them in the ears and it got stuck. So we went to the hospital, so they had to do a surgery to get it out. But unfortunately, the surgery, it damaged the eardrum and she lost 40% of the hearing on the left side of the ears. First Lady Sandra Granger earlier this year met with a team from the Hearing Foundation. Audiograms were conducted on patients with hearing disabilities through the audiology department of the Ministry of Public Health. The second phase of the mission is now to provide hearing aids to persons who are detected with ear problems. Tani Austin, co-founder of the Starkey Hearing Foundation, explains. The Starkey Hearing Foundation, we believe in partnering with people on the ground. None of us can do it alone, but together we can help so many more people. And so we're ready to help Guyana here. This is our first big effort. There will be more. On February 27, 2017, the Hearing Foundation partnered with the Ghana Foundation and the Ministry of Public Health's Audiology Department, along with the First Lady, to provide hearing aids to children with hearing disabilities across Ghana. Paul McAdam for the Government News Brief. A lengthy delay in a loan agreement has resulted in increased consultancy fees for East Coast Demerara Road widening project. Delon Sanko has the details. The East Coast of Demerara Road widening project has experienced significant delay in securing the loan for its completion. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Godfrey Vaughan, says this led to the consultancy firm increasing its fees from U.S. $1.9 million to U.S. $2.3 million. The increases basically came because of the time in which the contracts would have been awarded which was since in 20, if I remember carefully, 2013 or 2014. These contracts would have been awarded but was never really put on the table because of the various issues in terms of having the loan um, inked. And we know the loan basically was only inked recently. The framework agreement was signed. The Permanent Secretary explains that the consultancy form will soon pursue the contract documents to determine if there should be adjustments before work commence. We've already issued the letters to Shaladia um, informing them of the changes. 
and they will sh shortly be reviewing the document for design so that they would um, give us any comments that they need to have before actual work starts. To date, preliminary works including the widening of the road and removal of utilities have been completed by the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. The contract is mobilizing right now, which is um, uh, China Rail, they're mobilizing. Um, they shortly they should be start stockpiling their materials and so forth, and works will get going shortly. The road project was initiated in 2013 by the previous administration, but last November, the government and the People's Republic of China inked a U.S. 45.5 million concessional loan for the completion of the widening and improvement of the road between Better Hope and Belfiel on the east coast of Demerara. The contract was subsequently awarded to China's Railway First Group Limited. Delon Sanko for the Government News Brief. As we close this evening, Gabriela Patram joins us once again to report that private developers are being urged to use the land for the purpose it was acquired. Chief Executive Officer CEO of the CHMPA Leland Sol says that the authority is set to go after those private developers who acquired vast tracts of lands through under the previous administration but have since failed to develop them. We are encouraging them to develop those lands, to live up to the agreement of sale. And I should say that in some cases <coughs> it is likely that we will make moves to repossess some of those land. Many of these private developers still owe the CHMPA money, and this would make it easier for the CHMPA to repossess the lands. Saul says that authority has commenced the repossession process. I can tell you that I would have instructed uh, our corporate secretary to start to initiate action in some cases to repossess land from private developers who have failed to deliver. CHNPA has also forwarded many of the private developers' agreements to the Attorney General's office for legal consideration. Meanwhile, the authority is also going after those persons who, in an attempt to defraud the system, have obtained more than one government lots. CHNPA's Operation Director, Denise King Tudor, explains. Sometimes you'll find where persons, they... They, use, they change their names or they use another name or they're already married to someone and our policy says if your spouse um, or whether you're married or not, the person is married or not, if your spouse should own, you are not eligible to participate in, in the government um, housing program. And there are cases where persons, they report this information to us mm -hmm. or as we go through the system, Based on CHMPA's allocation policy, a person is only entitled to one lot from the government. For the Government News Brief, Gabriella Patram. Thanks for watching. Visit gina.gov.gy for more news and information 24-7. We're also on Facebook and YouTube and the links are on the screen. Goodbye for now.